Hi guys, it's your girl Steffi and today we will be talking about the most used keyboard shortcuts that I use during my workflow for Clo3D and Marvelous Designer. And I use these pretty much for every single project and I swear even if it saves half a second it is well worth it. So I hope you guys find this, you know, this video useful and I hope you guys utilize it so that it makes your workflow more efficient. Okay, the first one, which is the most favorite. I swear, I don't know why other 3D programs don't have this feature, but this one, as soon as I found it and I use it, I'm in love, absolutely in love. It's a duplicate button, if you will, a duplicate shortcut even. And it basically helps to duplicate not only just the pattern, but also like the sewing lines as well. So I will show you guys what I mean. So let's look at this piece that I have made before. So let's give you an example. If I was to, let's, let's delete this, a sleeve. Let's get rid, rid of a sleeve, say bye bye to it. Okay, so let's say we just made, theoretically, okay, let's just say we made this sleeve, okay? And this has already got sewing lines. So, you know, you can check your sewing lines here. And so it's already sewn. And then now we need to get on to making the other side. I mean, of course you can do control C, control V, copy and paste, right? But that doesn't also translate and bring over the sewing information, if that makes sense. So what I would do instead of control C and then control V, you're gonna press Control C and then press Control D. And that will duplicate it for you. So let's just have a look on this side in 3D window. You will see that all the sewing lines are already there. It is honestly my most favorite feature of this program. It just saved me so much time. So I highly recommend if you guys don't use this already, um, try it. <laughs> Try it, try it, because I really recommend. I mean, of course you can, with all of these keyboard shortcuts, there's always a, you can right click and you can probably find it here, copy, there's paste, there's mirror paste, for example, all of these, but I just tend to use the keyboard shortcut because, you know, once you learn the keyboard shortcuts, it's like muscle memory, it's so quick. So this is what I recommend. And then of course, sewing's imported and always check your sewing lines. I know it should be the same, but let's just simulate that. Boom. Easy. And another thing I love about these being duplicates is that let's say if I wanted to change the pattern, I don't know, let's press G or Z actually. So if we want to change these patterns and if I wanted to move this in, it duplicates it there. So honestly, saves so much time that it does it on both sides and I literally without this without this keyboard shortcut or just without this feature I don't know where I would be because I really wish other 3D programs would implement this but this is the first time that I've seen this being utilized and in Clove 3D or Marvelous Designer it is so useful so yeah have fun have fun with that and of course um if you guys ever wanted to like de-link anything let me just press ctrl z if you guys wanted to like you duplicated it and then after you've duplicated it you wanted to make this side longer and this side shorter okay let's just give that example and but they're still links right so what you can do i think is highlight both right click you can remove links editing. That means basically it stops them from being duplicates or linked. So if you do that, so now if I show you guys, like if you wanted to make this, this side super long, let's just make it super long. You see how that doesn't affect the other one? Yeah, so you can have it like that, which I think, especially if you guys are working on asymmetrical patterns, you can definitely speed up your workflow by making like most of it the same and then just like tweaking the parts that you don't need to be the same and yes that is one of my favorite most favorite feature i would have to say in clove 3d and marvelous designer the next one that i really like to use it is hiding the garments and i know that sounds weird but sometimes when you're working with multiple layers or if you want to work with the shirt first 
and then the trousers or vice versa and you just wanted to like hide it or you just wanted something to go out the way you could literally just do something like this or let's say this bag this bag i don't want to see it right now I'll just give an example you can highlight let's see if we can highlight this better highlight it hold shift highlight this highlight all the bag okay so we've highlighted the bag if you press shift q boom oh we've managed to get rid of the belt as well of course all right that we've got the belt as well so let's say we want to get rid of the accessories which we did P press shift q and all it is it hides it it doesn't actually take it away because if you were to simulate they're actually still there but if you just wanted to see something yeah press shift q and you can press shift q again to like make it come back so press shift q to hide it shift q again to bring it back which i find super useful sometimes you know when i'm editing something i really like maybe i have i have a jacket on top and i just want to see the underlayer you press shift q problem solved so yeah i wouldn't usually simulate and tweet but it's just for more so like just seeing different layers which i find pretty useful the last one that I'm going to talk to you guys today is freezing. Now I use freezing more in my workflow. I know there's some people that use deactivate, um, but I think it comes down to preference really. I just haven't personally used the deactivating feature as much as other people have. So what I tend to use is freeze and it is in a name. It, it basically freezes the piece so that it can't move, it can't be tweaked, and when you simulate, it won't move, which is pretty useful. So, for example, as always, we could freeze the belt. So if we highlight the belt, and if you press Control K, it will turn it this kind of light blue color. Oh, we've got the bag as well here. Highlighting the bag, let's not do that. Oh, shall we actually? You know what? We highlighted the bag in the last one, let's do it in this one as well. So Control K, just to freeze it. And what you will see, if I was to simulate now, right, here we go. If I try to move it, can't do it. But if I move this, the underlayer, you can see it won't really go through it. It will just like be in the way. So it's almost like it's frozen in time. And you know, sometimes that's useful because when you are done with editing with something and you want it to like drape a certain way or like look be in a certain position this is when like freeze can come handy a lot of the times i would use it for let me just turn off simulation here okay <laughs> checking that was off so a lot of the time what i use it for is let's say i needed to tweak the trousers a little bit more or the t-shirt i would grab what i've frozen and a lot of the times this is what I would do for when I've created maybe like a t-shirt and then I wanted to create the trousers but the t-shirt's in the way. Sometimes I would highlight them, move them in front, move them in the back, move them out the way and then I would like tweak and edit anything that is in front of here. And this is especially useful if you wanted to like tweak of course like the trousers, like tweak something, make it bigger, like change it, adjust it and that won't affects the belt or like the bag so for me this is like one of my favorite ways to like freeze something <laughs> it's hard to not use the word freeze for this feature but it basically stops in time and then you know especially during simulation it's not going to move so that is another tool that i find pretty useful and i highly recommend as always if you guys wanted to unfreeze it press ctrl k press ctrl k again to freeze it so it's pretty pretty intuitive so um that is how you would work with that so that is it these are the most used keyboard shortcuts that i use in my workflow and i hope you guys find them useful as well now of course there's many more there's so much more that i tend to use in my workflow but i just don't think about so of course if you guys got any questions then put it in the comments down below and let's see we can make another video just like this of course, if you guys want to see any of my process live, then head over to my Twitch. I stream every single Thursday and you can talk to me live on there. But if you're not into Twitch, then come join my Discord. I have two. One of them is 3D Wizards, which is an educational 3D Discord server, which is basically for anyone who's interested in 3D, wants to talk about 3D, want to support or just like share their work, give advice. Like that's where you want to hang out. 
And there is my second one, which is more like my personal Twitch Discord server called Imperial Digi Realm. So if you guys want to talk to me more so on a daily basis, I'm on there, yeah, pretty much every day. So yeah, if you guys want to chat, head over to my Discord and we can have a chat there. Until then, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in another video.